Hi everybody, so in video 1780 we made this thing, which is a marine stove. And it was uh, inspired by a request to make a marine stove, but it's slightly less expensive than $300 plus. So that's what we came up with. Now I also made the marine stove because it's actually quite adaptable. We can adapt this stove really, really easily to be another kind of stove that I was asked about by a chap called Evan Reed. Evan! wanted a stove that could run on um, vegetable oil, waste cooking oil, could provide heat, light and cooking all at the same time. And I thought, well, that's an interesting challenge, so I thought I'd take up that challenge. Now, we made this from cake tins, and we're going to adapt it by making a burner. Now, in the spirit of what I think Evan was talking about, we're going to make that from this, which is an empty paint can going to be called the reed stove I think because the reed stove particularly when you see the design when we've done it seems really really apt and it was Evan's idea to come up with something and I think it's an awesome idea and if we make it from recycled materials then it seems much more in fitting I mean with cake tins you can buy second-hand cake tins they're absolutely everywhere hey eh? uh, biscuit tins all kinds of stuff but I thought we'd use an empty paint can just for that reason. Okay, so first thing to do, so we need the top and the bottom and about a centimetre of each. So let's mark it off and cut those off. Then we want to fold over the edges. Bit of wood, put your tin on there, bit of metal, and out with the hammer. So rolling the edges like this, not only sort of neatens them up, makes them less dangerous, because of course it's not sharp anymore, but it also stiffens the structure and makes it stronger. Okay, so now we need a hole in the centre. Okay, there we go. Now we need eight holes around here. Eight millimetres in diameter. Okay, that's it. Now I've pre-drilled four four millimetre holes at 90 degrees here, which we're going to need later. But the first thing to do is to put the wick supports in these eight millimetre holes we drilled. Now, we did this in video 1773 when we went through how to make these things. It's pretty simple. You basically cut it off a piece of 8mm copper tube, if you can get 8mm, 10mm if you can't. Flare it out in a lathe or a drill. Whack it flat in a mandrel, which is a lump of steel with a 8mm hole drilled through it. And then you are pretty much done with these. Now to fit these, we want one for each 8mm hole. You just pop them in, pop it back over that mandrel and hit it with a hammer. that with the other seven. So to make the joint you insert the piece of copper and put that on the end which is an 8mm brass olive and now we have to crimp that down. Now we can crimp that down a number of ways but a really good way is to use this. This is a 8mm uh, to 15mm copper fitting meant for reducing but it's got a slight bevel in there. So if you put that on there that will push against the olive and help it crimp. Then we put a bolt on the other side to hold it flat and stick it in the vise. And that makes a really strong joint where it's not going to wobble. We do that with all eight. So those four holes that we drilled out earlier, you might have wondered about them. Well, they're for this. This is a bit of four millimeter bar. It goes in the hole with the nut on top, and then we use this. This is a bit of stainless steel straw. You can buy these everywhere now, actually, as soon as we're all um, abandoning plastic. So we feed the bar in and slide the stainless steel straw over the bar. So now we need the bottom of the can that we prepared earlier and the four holes drilled in the bottom of the can to correspond to the four holes drilled at the top. You pop on your straw and you feed the threaded bar through the hole in the bottom and tighten the nut and go around and do all four. And that is your burn head made. Now we take the stove that we made in 1780, pop that in there 
and we have our stove finished. Obviously that goes on top like that. Now, you don't need to put these copper bits in. The copper bits do add something, they do help it, but just straightforward holes in there will do just as well because, because it's not quite finished. We still need wicks. We need wicks and we need fuel. For our wick, we're going to use this, which is a mop head. It's actually a cotton mop head. So you, you want a cotton one, not a synthetic one. My friend Peter came round this morning and showed me this. Never occurred to me, but this mop, if you look down there, there's a little plastic retaining pin. If you knock that plastic retaining pin out, then the mop comes to pieces and it turns out you've got some ultra long wicking material there. So we've got loads of wicks here and we need eight of them. The secret to these wicks is to soak them for a couple of hours in oil. Six, seven, eight. So we'll pop eight into the pan and here's our fuel. We're going to use cooking oil. Just fill it with cooking oil and leave them for a couple of hours so you get a good long soak in there. When they've had a good soak, we can feed them into our burner head. There we go, I'm gonna give that a couple of hours. So after two hours, I loaded the wicks and we're gonna prime it with a bit of methylated spirits in this metal tray. Okay, and there it is. It's a little bit smoky still, but it's doing quite well, and you take care of the smoke by adjusting the wicks. So clearly, to cook on it, we put our grill on there. To turn it into a heater, put a metal tube on there, and the tube will get hot and give out the infrared heat. And to turn it into a light, we put a glass bulb on there. I'll put the light out so you can see that better. That's surprisingly pretty, actually. Hmm. Okay, so a couple of things about it. It was a bit of a struggle to get it going, actually. I had to douse it in paraffin a couple of times just to get enough heat into it to make that oil flow a bit better. So two hours soaking is what you need to do. It do need to prime it, maybe with a bit of ethanol, a bit of methanol, a bit of paraffin, something to get it going because it takes a bit to get going but once it's going it settles down and you can see now the smoke is actually gone as well so we've got a smokeless flame there as well. Now the idea of this is to use it in a tent uh, and to be honest I, I would use it in a tent if it were ventilated because it still is a smoky flame although you're not really seeing it much it still is but it is a multifunctional stove working on cooking oil which is what I was asked to do it's like all flames, I mean, make sure you watch playing with fire. We've got it on a nice bit of tile here, remember? And um, I think it's something that anybody could make that could be used for the function that um, it was wanted for. Anyway, I enjoyed the project. I hope you did too. It is pretty awesome, actually. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe. Yeah, I could watch that for ages. I'm going to put back into a light. Isn't that lovely?